All right. So the first phase was prophase, all right? And uh, <clears throat> uh, DNA condenses, the nuclear envelope disappears, the centrio pairs move to opposite poles, and the spindle fiber starts to grow from the centrioles to each of the chromosomes and then cross some of them actually uh, move to the other uh, move and connect with the other uh, sides, the other poles of uh, chromosomes. In metaphase, the centrioles reach opposite, they've already reached opposite uh, poles. The spindle fibers or spindle apparatus is fully formed. The spindles of, that are attached to the chromosomes push in both directions uh, from the, each pole and push the chromosomes uh, into the center of the cell and line them up uh, single file in, along the metaphase plate. In anaphase, the spindle fibers that connect the sister chromatids begin to shorten. The spindle fibers from one pole that are connected to spindle fibers on the other pole elongate, result, resulting in the sister chromatids being pulled apart from their centromere and move to the opposite poles. The cell elongates, and now each of the sister chromatids that we had in the replicated chromosome will, will become the single chromosome for the resulting uh, daughter cells. Telophase, the last phase, is where the chromosomes reach the poles. They start to return to their thread-like appearance. The nuclear envelope reappears. And now you have two new nuclei completely formed. When that happens, and, and, and the spindle fibers disappearing. And when those two uh, nuclear envelopes are, are reformed, then mitosis is technically over. Because remember, mitosis is nuclear division. Cytokinesis is cytoplasmic division. So as we, as we just said, cytoplasmic division is cytokinesis and usually occurs uh, at the onset, I mean at the end of anaphase through telophase, okay? And the plant cell, we just talked about the pl uh, cell plate forms between the two uh, forming uh, daughter cells, uh, and eventually that cell plate will connect on each side of the cell wall and be infused with cell, uh, cellulose to form a new cell wall. <clears throat> in animal cells, you have two new uh, daughter cells formed by the process of cleavage. This is where the plasma membrane begins to pinch into two, uh, and then the, as this uh, pinching occurs, there's a little, uh, little furrow, a little notch along the side of the cell. Uh, um, that's called the cleavage furrow. And when cytokinesis ends, you have two new daughter cells with the same amount of cytoplasm uh, that you had before. Or uh, equal amounts of cytoplasm, I'm sorry. Uh, the, that was originally in the, in the parents, right? So that is cell division, that's mitosis, all right? All cells in the body uh, utilize mitosis to make new ones, right? Uh, there are, there is a, pro a different cell division occurring in the reproductive uh, organs of, or of organisms. We'll talk about that here in a second, right? But uh, cell division has to be controlled sometimes or it will, you know, get out of hand. And so, there are four things that control cell division. One is anchorage dependency. This is where the cell has to be anchored to a surface in order for it to, to divide, right? Uh, blood cells, they don't divide as they're 
uh, flowing through your veins and arteries. All right, they are made uh, in the bone marrow, and the bone marrow is a soft, spongy-like material that's found on the long ends of long bones, like your femur, uh, and that's where most of your blood cells are made, or uh, where all your blood cells are made, because they need this anchorage. They need some sort of surface in order to, to divide. They have to be stuck to a surface. Another thing that controls cell division is density-dependent inhibition. This is where, uh, as the cell cells divide to form a tissue layer, as they get more and more dense, cell division starts to slow down until when a, a tissue layer is fully formed, then cell division stops because the, the tissue layer does not need any more cells. So your body uh, does use density dependent inhibition to help control cell division. Another thing uh, is called, they're called growth factors. These are proteins that are uh, secreted by some body cells that stimulate other cells to divide. Uh, when those uh, growth factors are used up, cell division stops. Uh, well, human growth hormone, HGH, is one that is, uh, I've seen it now being uh, promoted on television, especially targeting females. Uh, that are old, like my age, <laughs> that uh, want to sort of regain some of their youthful, uh, uh, youthful appearance. Uh, and then, of course, athletes sometimes will use HGH to try to help promote their uh, performance. Uh, the thing about HGH is that uh, it does not stay in the body very long. It gets used up, just like that. Uh, third definition says, and so it's harder to detect. Uh, what what it does is promotes uh, muscle growth without muscle tear down. So if you're lifting, uh, you and get you uh, you can go back to lifting again in a shorter amount of time. The recovery time for your muscles is a lot shorter, and so that way you can uh, build more muscle tissue. Uh, in a shorter period of time. And so uh, that's, that's human growth hormone, which is a growth factor. And then there is a sequence of proteins that cyclically operate <laughs> to trigger uh, and coordinate major events of the cell cycle. And this is the cell cycle control system. It, for instance, we'll uh, tell the cell to go from metaphase to anaphase, all right? So it triggers those different uh, uh, types of uh, uh, events that are going on within cell division, within the cell cycle, right? Uh, um, there is a, there is a, uh, website and it's called Cells Alive Cells Alive dot com all right and that on that uh, website it will have mitosis and you can look at mitosis and sort of let it it sort of does film lapse uh, photography on drawings, so they're not really actual cells, but drawings of cells going through the two uh, different, or the, the going through all the phases of, of mitosis and through cytokinesis to form two new daughter cells. So it, that's a good resource to, to help, again, visualize what's going on in cell division. If that cell cycle control system is not working well, uh, there is a disease that we that we are all probably familiar with is cancer. Uh, this is where you have an excessive growth of, of cancerous cells, 
just the excessive growth of cells is called abnormal growth is called a tumor and those tumors can be benign which they don't they don't have cancerous cells or they can be malignant which uh, is uh, abnormal mass of cancer cells. Uh, most cell, most cancers, if left uh, uh, untreated, will probably metastasize. That means that they will spread through other to other body parts. Uh, my wife has breast cancer. Before we got her breast cancer. Uh, did the breast cancer uh, surgery, breast surgery, uh, it had already spread. And so it, isn't, it, it went to the, her liver. And so uh, we're in the process of treating uh, her breast cancer that is now in her liver. Um, so that was metastasis. Cancer claims about one every every five individuals. And there are four types of cancer. Carcinomas in the it, you know, brain, uh, the breast breast cancer, most of the, you know, they're all uh, carcinomas. They're cancers of uh, the external or internal coverings of organs or uh, ducts things like that. Sarcomas are cancers of support tissue, so they're uh, bone cancer. Some uh, ligaments have cells in them as well. They could, be, could have some cancer. Leukemia are cancers of the bone marrow and the blood. Uh, lymph, lymphomas are cancers of the spleen and the lymph system. It's very important for you to know your body. So you need to know what's normal and what's not because uh, early detection is it, on some cancers is, it is the key it's, it can call it can allow for treatability if you have tes testicular cancer uh, it's very treatable if you get prostate cancer it's treatable but you need to get them before they do metastasize. Uh, colon cancer, uh, if you have a dark uh, sort of uh, curdly, uh, dark, darkish red uh, blood in the stools, you might want to get checked for, for uh, colon cancer. But uh, there are two types of, there, there's actually more now types of treatments. There's uh, 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 immunotherapy. There's there's all sorts of different types of uh, their treatments for cancer now. But the two types that that they're the most uh, commonly known about are radiation therapy, which exposes the cancer uh, cancerous areas to high radiation, and that's hoping to stop the uh, cells from dividing. Uh, chemotherapy is where you use drugs to disrupt cell division. Uh, there's some commonly used, there's a bunch of different types of chemo. Two commonly used uh, drugs are benblastin, which is extracted from the periwinkle, which is a little uh, flowering plant, uh, and then taxol, which is from the bark of the Pacific yew. It's an evergreen uh, bush. Uh, and nowadays, those chemotherapies are, are uh, synthetically made. Uh, they're not extracted from plant material. All right. So each species has a uh, unique chromosome number, right? It's the number, the sum total of all the chromosomes. I may, I may cell within a specific species, all right? Human somatic cells, those are the body cells, remember. There are 46 chromosomes, so that is the chromosome number. There's 23 pair, one from the father and one from the mother, all right? Uh, so we have those 23 pairs, 
One set's from the father, one set's from the mother, right? And the chromosome number is equal to the diploid number. Di, di means two, and ploidy is talking about uh, chromosomes. And so uh, a lot of times you'll see it uh, abbreviated as 2N. That means it has two sets of chromosomes. You have 23, two sets of 23 chromosomes, right? One from each parent. So those, those pairs, all right, those 23, well, 22 of the 23 pairs, all right, uh, in a diploid cell from, are called homologous chromosomes, or homologs, but in short sometimes, uh, is they're called. And uh, they're chromosomes that have the same shape, have the same uh, length, and have the same genes on them, all right? A gene is a unit of genetic information about a specific trait. A trait would be like rolling your tongue. Can you roll your tongue or not? All right, that's a trait, okay? A uh, gene is just the genetic information about that trait. A locus is where you find that gene on a chromosome. So on homologous chromosomes, the locus for a particular gene is found on the same place as its partner, okay? They both have the same gene and it's found in the same place. <clears throat> uh, the supercomputer has allowed for the human genome to be deciphered. We know all the, where all these genes are located now on all the chromosomes of the human cell, but we don't know what those particular chromosome, uh, what those particular genes are doing. All right, we we don't know that, but we by the use of supercomputers, we have deciphered how uh, you know how much uh, you know we how. how we have deciphered where those genes are located, right? Our genes are located. We just don't know what those genes do, what, what they represent. Uh, and that'll take a long, long time uh, to decipher. All right, so we have homologous chromosomes. So 22 homologous chromosomes that have the same shape, length, and genes are called autosomes, right? These are the regular homolog, homologous chromosome pairs, all right? There is one pair, which is the 23rd pair, where they don't have the same shape, uh, length, or, or genes, okay? And these are called sex chromosomes, and they determine the organism's gender. There are X sex chromosomes and Y sex chromosomes. X chromosomes are found in both males and females. Female would have two X chromosomes, so they would be XX. Uh, a male would have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. A Y chromosome is found only in males. Gametes, which are the sex cells, right, the sperm and the egg, they only have one set of chromosomes. So. They are called haploid. So you have two haploid gametes fused together to form a diploid uh, adult once uh, development has occurred, right? So in the human life cycle, we have a result of sexual intercourse, uh, haploid sperm fusing with a haploid egg, in fertilization, the resulting fertilized egg is going to be called a zygote. That's an awesome word in it, zygote, all right? And then the, during the process of mitotic uh, cell division, we have development occurring from a zygote to a multicellular diploid adult, right? And that zygote is diploid now, right? You had two ha haploid uh, 
gametes fusing together to form a diploid zygote. And then you had mitosis occurring to allow that zygote to develop into a multicellular diploid adult. And during maturity of the individuals, of the adults, uh, but then the reproductive organs of each uh, gender, the, the division of a single diploid nucleus will occur to form four haploid uh, gametes, we say. So the formation of gametes is also a cell division, but it is a different type where we reduce the number of chromosomes in each of the uh, the resulting gametes. So in meiosis, this is the process of meiosis, in the, which occurs in the testes and the ovary, right? You have a diploid germ cell or parent cell that will divide, and once meiosis is finished, that diploid parent cell becomes four haploid gametes, right? So I want to move on here.